Alright, so having just finished episode 3, a fire made flesh and the Madeline Pryor storyline beginning, ending, no relation, coincidence in my case. Okay, so here are my first impressions on X-Men 97. This is a revival of the classic it's like animated series we've been highly anticipating and I'm pleased to say it lives up to the hype. So, let's begin. As we're going to talk about the brackets. I'm going to be some minor spoilers not only for this show, but also the original run, which I watched most, but not all of. Uh, finishing on the final two episodes of, oh, it's of the original series. The show picks up right where the, the original home one left off with the finale graduation day. A being if is event still having ramifications with Xavier being off planet in it to the X Men but functionally killed off for everyone else else and as new threats arise for humanity and mutants alike, like the team must move forward forward in Charles' absence with. Not only Scott Cyclops Summers leading the team, but also forming a little alliance with Magneto. And when they were making this show, my first thought was what was going, to, how they're going to handle who was going to take up the mantle after Norm Spencer and David Hamblin passed away, respectively. And I must say that both Ray Chase and Matthew Watterson have done a fantastic job at filling. They're stead with Chase having a wide variety of anime rules under his belt, which include, but not limited to, the to Professor Cerise and Pokemon Journeys. He's the so David Shield and the My Hero Academia movie Two Heroes. Those. Donovan, Bukarati, and Rubber Soul in Joe's Bizarre Adventure, Conda Fuku the Alternative, and Tengen Uzui in Demon Slayer Name of You, who, and Warderson also has a considerable amount of video game credits on top of having previous model experience with the What If event series, which I'm still working on, by the way. He, he also, who, Contributed to show a voice of Diablo 4. Or he also voiced his invited to voice of Uncharted 4 and voice version of Fallout 4. So again, he's more than qualified to join the returning cast members, members who are still around, I mean and, and honestly. They don't mind about how they handle Morph either. I mean, it honestly makes sense for that character to identify that way as a shapeshifter and also makes me wonder if people who are mad about the decision actually watch the original show or read the comics because I certainly did enough to understand the idea. I mean, to me, it's no weirder, weirder than in the storyline where they, they were resurrected by Mr. Sinister. No, I'm not making that up. It's also a, a, a series that clearly demonstrates hate that's made by people who clearly understand and love the material and want to do it justice. Is that we, that the people, I've seen interviews who's from the crew members, and even though I have mixed feelings towards one of the people being let go before the show started. I, from what I can gather, as far as I know, this plot was pretty amicable all behind the scenes, and also Easter eggs alluding to not just the source material, but the comics and original cartoon, but also little nods to the original Pride of the X-Men pilot, which was not picked up, but still influenced Konami's excellence and six-person arcade game. Um, the two lead creatives, their mains were Colossus and Storm, respectively. 
Minor Wolverine and Nightcrawler. Or they have also been known to rotate with Cyclops and also knows notably console the game as Dazzler even. And I definitely will be covering in the rest of this first season and as new episodes come available. However, much like has been apparent with the Bad Batch, I'm gonna have to you know, make my schedule a bit more flexible given the ever-changing nature of the business and and my bandwidth. I definitely think like the becoming one with Hulu makes sense given the current landscape and I will just deal with the Nelson Pelt situation that comes. So, as, but as you can tell, I am very much not a fan of his, his persona or his financial decisions either. Anyway, I definitely enjoy the animation in the show, especially it definitely builds on what the original did, sort of this comic book come to life idea. Yeah, not just in terms of poses and movements color palettes, the lighting, I mean, and even though just like the suits and framings would not be able to play some like the Jim Lee run of artwork that was common in that time frame and has been highly influential, I mean, and definitely I'm going to be looking forward to talking more about that, I mean, uh, standout sequences including like the first episode fighting not only the anti-mutant extremists, but also what's left of the Sentinels. But also the trying to you know, confront assassins at the UN. And also this sequences than the one that just streamed came tonight. So I definitely look forward to talking more about this as the show goes on. Um, and as I've stated, I'm going to be bumping the fourth episode of this uh, due to a couple ones got lined up uh, for next week, so no worries there. Anyway, that's all I've got to say for now. I am very impressed with survival, and I'll see you all again soon, so take care, everyone. Mm.